In this episode, I'm gonna show you some of the top techniques using AI that I apply to my work doing real estate photography. I'm gonna do it with three things in mind. I'm gonna show a variety of examples so that you can see how you would apply some of these techniques to various cases that are specific to real estate photography. The second aspect of this though, while I'm going through this entire tutorial, is to show you the options that you have so that you can see what you might be able to do, what your limits could be, so that as you're shooting on site, what to think about so that you can start applying some of these. But the third thing, and it's most important, is that how you can apply this to your work as a real estate photographer so that you can have some upsell opportunities. When you learn how to do some of these very simple edits, then you can add this as another service. You can ask your clients, hey, I see this issue here, I can fix that in post-processing for a fee. Those are upsell opportunities, so by seeing this from those three perspectives, this will then give you more things that you can apply to your work as a real estate photographer. First though, let's take a look at a broader example. And in this example, we'll be able to see the upsell opportunities for other types of markets in real estate photography, and then how some of this was applied. And then we'll start from beginning to end on some of the simple to some of the more complex edits using AI. So first, taking a look at the big picture just real quick before getting into the edits themselves. To see what I'm talking about, to provide this as an upsell opportunity to your clients, this is very typical. This was a commercial shoot that I did here recently, and it's quite common that they might wanna have some lifestyle action going on, especially with active office areas. But when we take a look at this, it wasn't an active office at all. So we were in and out fairly quick doing this shoot. It didn't really didn't take that long to do this entire building, but what was an upsell opportunity is to be able to show that we can provide these extra services. So what I started doing with my commercial clients in real estate, and I started doing this also with the clients that I have for just standard property listings for selling houses and condos and whatnot, is showing them some of the things that I can do with my editing. So with this then, once they started seeing some of my commercial clients seeing this is what I can do, when I'm on site, I start talking to them. It's like, well, do you think maybe we should virtually stage some of this? Do you think maybe I should change out the flooring so that you can show what the potential is? What they can do then is they can show potential clients, here's what this could look like. So this is a concept. And a lot of times they'll have this uh, labeled as a concept image. Anyways, this is kind of the upper end of everything. But once again, the concept is the same that we start with something very basic, we show what we can eventually do, and then you start getting more work to do that. So let's start out with the very simple and start working our way up from there. Now this is an edit that might be more common when you're working with designers, builders, where they want you to do more edits after the fact. You can even change a lot of stuff and they won't really be dinged for it because it's not gonna be on the multiple listing service, but this can also be done for your regular listing clients as well. And what we're looking at here to try to fix is this reflection. When we go down into the countertop, we can see that these under cabinet lights are reflecting pretty harsh on this nice countertop. So it was a very simple fix. This is it right here. And what I did was I took the layer, after I was all done doing the flambient blending, I went ahead and took this layer and duplicated it. I'll do control J to duplicate it. And then what I'll do is I will take the remove tool and that's over here. Just grabbing that, you might've used this already. And the key here is that two things, I'm gonna overlap and get more of this than I need to, but I'm gonna control it on a separate layer and you'll see why here in just a second. So then what I'll do is I'm gonna draw a circle around here. I'm not gonna fill it in. When I then release that, it fills it in. If you see that, then you know by an automatic filling in an area that it really is grabbing the area. It's got good AI then behind it to work with, chances are anyways. To be able to do that though, you wanna make sure that this little checkbox up here that says remove after each stroke is unchecked. You don't want that checked because otherwise it's not going to fill properly. Also, we want to remove this one here, so the same thing, an overlap just a little bit, 
that should be fine. And then you can either hit enter or the little checkbox up here and let it do its remove. So once again, very nice, very clean. But if you don't like that much remove, you feel that that's just a little unnatural, then just change the layer opacity. So zoomed out here, I can change this layer opacity, let's say down to about, oh, that's 57%, whatever. I can change how much of that then I want to shine through. So this is without any, this is with a little bit, and then if I change that opacity to 100%, this is with it completely gone. Okay, let's move on to the next example. This is something that's very common when shooting listings, and this was a very tight bathroom to get into. You can see I had almost no room for the tripod because over here, there's a shower. It was a very narrow doorway, but no matter what, you almost always get some type of door jam or something in here if you wanna show the first sink, which is closest to the camera. So what I did in this case is I did a simple generative fill and that went away. This is how it was done. Let me zoom out here and I'll grab the polygon lasso tool. And I'm gonna go ahead and draw a polygon lasso around. You can see that's the mirror that's overlapping. Bring that down here and I'll get this area. Okay, once that's in there, then go up to edit and then generative fill. And then don't type anything in the generative fill text box. Leave it blank and just select generate. Then it'll go out to the cloud and do a generative fill and provide you three options. And here we can see the three options. I'll move the properties box off to the side. We'll zoom in here to make this fit. And then I can select which one I think is most natural looking to fit. Also in bathrooms, it's a matter of removing that tripod and camera reflection. And this is very common. You're gonna run into, of course, mirrors that are gonna be facing you. And one of the things that I do to work around that, and you might have seen this in other tutorials, is that I will take other footage where I can then edit myself out of the mirror. And that's what this basically was done here. And then it used the standard Flambian technique that I also show in other videos. And by the way, these type of things too are covered in my pro courses on doing real estate photography. If you're not familiar with that, I do have a series of online courses to do professional interior real estate photography, expert editing on interior photography, also professional exterior photography and videography for real estate as well. I have best-selling books that cover a lot of this as well. If you're interested in any of that, I do have links down in the description for this video. Moving along though to this example, which is very common, is once we've got all this done, we wanna remove this, there's a lot of ways to do it, and I show some different options in the expert editing course. One included, which is very simple and it does work a lot of time, is to remove this using the remove tool. So I'll just flatten the image, very typical during the workflow, and then I'll use that remove tool, but the first thing you probably wanna do is remove just part of it. Like I'll remove just the camera. And once again, I don't have that remove after each stroke, so I can get very close on what I'm doing. I'll hit enter and then the camera goes away. There's a little bit of AI stuff sometimes that's left behind and when you do, you just go ahead and remove that. You do this in pieces and that's the key here is that when you do it in pieces, then it's a little easier for Photoshop's AI to figure that out. And then you can just keep going, keep removing everything that you need to. Once again, doing this in pieces, it's a lot better than you try to take it all in one chunk and sometimes you're gonna get some real funky results. So this last one should do it and that's probably pretty good. There we go, that is removed. So let's move on though into the next tip, which is a little bit different. And this is where the remove tool doesn't really get you what you need all the time. In fact, it's really sometimes not that much better than some of the older tools in Photoshop like Content Aware Fill. So we've got this large dresser here. This is very common. Inside the room, this looks okay but here it's just distracting. Now, for a standard listing, I'm just gonna go with it, but I would offer to the client that I can remove that if you want in post, and then I'd quote them a price for doing it. This though is a little bit different. I did do a generative fill, and you can see that here, took care of it, but there's still a bit of rug on the floor. The way that this generative fill was done was very similar to doing all the other generative fills, like I've just done in the other example, and also then here, 
where what I would do is take the polygon tool and I would draw a polygon lasso tool around whatever I want to remove. And then I would do generative fill, not say anything. So that's what produced this layer. But the problem is I still have this down here. There's a little rug they had and now that it's really cut off, it just looks a lot worse than what it was. So here, what I would recommend doing is a combination of things. This layer here that is the generative fill layer can't really be rasterized very well and edited, never works out very well. So instead what you would do is you would stamp these. And that's what this is here. That's what I, one of the things I show throughout my courses is when you start stamping these layers and you get then one layer, which is a combination of everything, that's when then you can remove things. So if I just delete that layer and if I stamp this again, I'll do control alt shift E, I've got a stamped layer, then I can go up here and I can use then the remove tool. So once again, the little trick of using the remove tool is try to draw a circle around the area. If it detects it, it did, it filled it in, then hit return or the checkbox at the top and that should then fill it in. And sure enough, it did a pretty good fill on that by using the remove tool. Now, this isn't quite the same flooring over here as what's over here. Is it a big enough a difference to worry about for a listing? Maybe if you're really splitting hairs, but for the most part, I don't think I'd really worry about that. So anyways, it's up to you on whether you feel that this would be justified for it. But even if it's not a listing client, these are things that you can do for designers, builders, remodel companies, things like that. Okay, moving on to the next tip. This is one you might recall that I did in an earlier video. It was a different angle when we had a very harsh reflection on the floor and we removed it using generative fill. And I've got a link to that video, by the way, if you wanna see that tutorial in the description as well. But here, the area of concern from this angle of this particular shot are these pictures that were over here. So it was a collage of family portraits and I blurred them out here. There's no sense in sharing that right here. But what we can do is change that to something else. So by drawing a polygon around each one of the images, I did a generative fill. And what was the generative fill? Well, I can go back here and see what that is in its properties and all I said was pictures of beaches. That's what I asked Generative Fill to do. Now I had to do it a few times because you can see it had some real bizarre, funky stuff that it filled in. But after I did it just a few times, it ended up working out fairly well. And one of the keys to that is sometimes you have to change your wording. So down here, I tried, well, let's do some family photos. That was the text for these three. When I went up to here, I said, let's try nature photos. And it didn't really look like nature photos for those three. So then I said, nature photos that match each other. And uh, I don't know what it was even doing up here. And then eventually I was doing here, nature photos that match each other. And it still <laughs> didn't really work. But when I finally got to here, that's when I said, let's just try pictures of beaches. And it worked fairly well. And I thought that it met uh, everything, it, it lined up as though it was some type of good collage of pictures and I just went with it. So anyways, this is an option for when you need to remove pictures. People are saying, oh, I can't have those pictures in there, can you blur them? You can say, tell you what, I can do something better. I can fill in a better scene there. Describe what the scene is, then all you have to do is type it when you do the generative fill. That's another upsell opportunity. Now, this is a slightly interesting shot that was done for a remodel company. And this particular shot during this shoot was to show that they had this pocket door built in with the closet behind it, but that's not how it looked. This is how their closet looked. And if we go in here and take a look, we can see it's, it's a bit of a messy closet. It's not something you'd really wanna have on a print ad for a remodel company. So instead, what I did was just a simple generative fill. And now I've got some suits on there. Now, to do that, I'll go ahead and click on that layer, go to properties, and I can see all the variations that I tried. So this is the one here that I went with. I first tried though, I just did nothing. And I don't know what Photoshop was thinking. It did remove stuff here, but that's really bland, especially for an ad. So then I started typing stuff in. A neatly organized closet with suits hanging on hangers and shoes on shelves. 
It didn't do anything. It didn't do what I asked. It said, gave me this. I have no idea what that was trying to show. This was obviously very bizarre. So I tried it a few different times and these were shoes on shelves, I guess. Very, very bizarre. But then when I went in here and I said a neatly organized closet with pairs of dress shoes on shelves, it got me this, it wasn't the best. I tried it a couple different times, it just kept failing. So this one seemed to work very well. Now the one thing is, this image is large and if we go in to 100% and we go into that closet, we can see that it's pixelated and it's soft. Now, what you can do to avoid that is you can first resize the image smaller or like I've shown in other tutorials, you can take this in pieces and I'll leave a link to that tutorial as well. But that leads into the next example, which was a bigger closet, which was a real mess. And so this is very typical. They want to show you, go into a listing and the realtor says, they've got a huge walk-in closet, I wanna capture it. And you go in and nobody was expecting you to go in and shoot their messy closet. So you can offer to the realtor, say I can shoot that and you can have that, but I can also clean that up and give you something that looks like this. Now, once again, this is an option where you could resize the image first to something smaller. That way you don't have something that's pixelated because this I left at full size. I go in 100% and it's kind of pixelated. It's just a little bit messy. You can see the difference up here compared to the shoe boxes that were left compared to when I did the generative fill. And of course, there's this bizarre thing down here and I could edit that out later. But the fact is, that what I came up with, what generative fill came up with, was better than what was there. So it's an option, and especially here for a large area to clean up a closet, if it's for an MLS listing, resize the photo down, maybe about 2000 pixels wide, and then go ahead and put your generative fill in there. I wanna move ahead now into some of the commercial market. So when you're doing commercial real estate, a lot of times the buildings have been left in disarray um, because companies move and they know people are gonna come in and just wipe them clean and put their own stuff in there, or they may be active. In this case, there was a kitchenette back in this particular building and it started out looking like this. So I wanted to step through this and show you the different edits that I did to get the accomplished goal. So first what I did was, did the standard uh, photography that I do, the standard, it was a, this was actually a flambient blended image using the shoot through umbrellas. I delivered that to the client and then they come back and they say, hey, I know you can do a bunch of Photoshop magic. Can you remove that fish tank or maybe just clean up the water? Can you remove some of the items on the countertops? So what I ended up doing was, well, I'll give them this version. Here is just a bluer bunch of water. No big deal. Clean that up a little bit on the counters. If we move in here, we can see that on this layer, I used the remove tool to get rid of a bunch of stuff. That's what that layer was. So far, so good. This was a bit of a mess over here. So I went ahead and I did another layer by extending this, something I show in the expert editing course. And then this was a mess here. So I added a color fill layer, also like I show in expert editing course. And then I still had this little strainer in here that really bugged me. So I did a generative fill. Now it didn't do a very good job on that generative fill. All it was is a very simple polygon around that dish strainer. So what I did was I stamped the layers and I did then another old fashioned edit where I grabbed the sink, flipped it over and put it on this layer. So going old school on it with a combination of all these other AI uh, fixes, then I've got something that looks pretty good, but I'm not done yet. Back out here, I still didn't like the look of that fish tank. And I also didn't like this table extending all the way out here. So first thing, let's get rid of that table. Simple polygon around that little table, generative fill with nothing in there, it went away. That's a simple thing for generative fill to fix. And I thought that would be pretty good, so I stamped all the layers, did a couple little edits here, but the fish tank was still bothering me. I just did not like this fish tank at all. So it's like, well, let's see what generative fill can do. So what I did was I ended up with this where generative fill took it out. But what I did was in generative fill, let me go to the properties and let me just drag it out here so you can see 
First thing I did was just left it blank. After drawing a polygon around the fish tank, I left it blank and it gave me three different renditions of different countertops and whatnot that I could put there. So that was good and I liked this one. But then I also said, well, let's try it with a cleaner fish tank. So I did another one where I said, a fish tank with tropical fish. And this is what Photoshop thought uh, that should be there. Uh, they gave me three options. I have no idea what Photoshop was thinking by putting in these tropical plants, because it wasn't tropical fish or a fish tank. But anyways, doing the generative fill with nothing in there, then I got something that was fairly good. I ended up going with this. And this is another example when you get into commercial real estate, and this also can apply sometimes to even the listing market. You go into a room, it's filled with stuff. You can't even see the space that well. So there's a couple things you could do. You could remove a lot of that. One way to do it is generative fill. So what I ended up doing was I drew a polygon around all the equipment, all this stuff here. And since this was a recording studio originally, well, what I did in generative fill is I said a recording studio with the equipment against the walls. And why did I get that descriptive? Because when I first did it, I was getting stuff like this and it was okay, but I don't know what this is or this stuff over here. It just was such a mess. That's not a real guitar. Some of the stuff just was really bizarre and I tried different wording to get different stuff. In fact, right before doing this, I thought, well, it might be nice to have wording for a recording studio with a rock singer. Let's just zoom in here real close. This, I don't know who these people are, why they're generating faces that look like this, but that's just something out of a nightmare. So, but by wording it and having this recording studio with the equipment against the walls, I had a few options that were definitely better. So it looked like this. Now I wouldn't have to do anything and I could have most of that removed and it is more editable if I wanted to do something else. So for instance, let's turn this off and let me take the polygon tool again. Let's go around this large area and we won't have to type anything all that we'll do is we'll see what it'll do, which will no doubt at least remove some of this stuff. Maybe not all of it, but we'll at least get closer and we might have something then that we can edit. So now that we have that, I'll just go up to edit and then generative fill and leave it blank and hit generate. And now I've got a few different options. So without telling it, it was a recording studio, it came up with this, which is kind of neat. It came up with this, which is a lot easier to now remove if I stamp those layers than trying to remove all this piece by piece. So this did a pretty good job and also this, this is an easy enough thing to remove. So now I could take, stamp these layers, completely remove that, and then I could take that into virtual staging software like applydesign.io and I could pop something else in there. But going back then to where we started on this journey with AI and what you can do for real estate photography is that it's not just here's some tricks you can do, here's some techniques that you can use and here's some tips. Yes, it's good to know these things and know your limits and what you can do, but that's because it's not just to edit the photos, it's to be able to provide your customers a service that you can charge extra for. Once you start learning how to edit your own photos and know the capabilities that you have in editing and also how to combine AI in your editing as well, then you can provide a variety of different services that can also make you more money.